Welcome to Film Obsessive. Today with us is director Daniel McCabe, whose new documentary is titled Grasshopper Republic. Uh, Daniel, welcome. And for our audience who's yet to see the film, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what they'll expect? Sure. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for having me on here, Paul. And uh, it's, it's it's great. I'm a fan. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, Grasshopper Republic is a, it's a feature documentary about the, the balance between man and nature, and, and it follows a, a troop of Ugandan grasshopper trappers for several seasons uh, as they, they hunt an elusive swarm of grasshoppers, which they'll catch for, for food. Uh, and it's, it's not a, about sustenance. It's, a, it's quite a delicacy in Uganda. So, uh, so it's this great treat. And, and if these trappers catch this swarm at the right time and in the right place, they could make a year's pay in, in one night. So, uh, so it's a bit like gold rush prospectors. It is a bit like gold rush prospectors. And I think viewers will notice and appreciate that, especially when they see some of the contraptions that the uh, trappers use and have designed to catch the grasshoppers. Um, it's really a, just a remarkable and thought provoking documentary um and i think one of the things people are going to notice first about it is just the the truly arresting visual imagery of the insects itself um at times your film takes us down into the insect world on a really granular level can you just tell us a little bit about what's involved in that kind of work to do that close up uh photography Sure, sure. Well, it was it was really important to us that we not only captured the reality of these human trappers, but, you know, the grasshoppers themselves are, are one of the main characters. So we wanted to be able to get right down on the level with them, uh, and which was quite difficult. Uh, I, I've never worked uh, in macro cinematography before, and uh, it was a bit of a challenge, but uh, but with some some good advice and uh, and a solid team and and a, a kit of specialty macro lenses, we were able to do just that. Uh, of course, it never would have been possible without our our Ugandan entomologist collaborator Francis Sengendo. Uh, you know, when we began making the film, we had these wild dreams of like, all right, we want to we want to film these grasshoppers as close as we can, but we never imagined that we'd actually get that close. And that close, I think, is millimeters away so uh so yeah it 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 was tricky but it it worked out yeah it's really wonderful and then there's a, a parallel and a connection too with the the work uh, that the insects do and the work that the humans do that i think is also a really interesting part of the documentary um the, the documentary unfolds without any, you know, overt narration, without any traditional talk to interviews, lower thirds, chirons, that kind of stuff. Um, it's very much a, a direct cinema like experience. And I was just wondering um, if you could talk a little bit, too, um, about what that requires in terms of filmmaking, because that strikes me as a special challenge in its own right. Sure. You know, we we saw this as an experience uh, and, and we wanted to create that environment where we we just drop the viewer right in there and 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 we let them do the work, so to speak. Uh, you know, uh, it it had its its twists and turns, uh, you know, but uh, but I think withholding the information and letting the viewer discover it felt right. And uh and, you know, in the process, these trappers, it's a, you know, they spend months in the field trying to catch the swarm and most of the time they don't. So we wanted to to reflect that in the, in the viewing experience. So uh, I, I hope that came across, um, uh, you know, it was it again, like, I, like I said, it's meant to be an experiential kind of a nature film meets sci-fi kind of a situation with a little bit of a thriller aspect at times as well. Um, I'm wondering about your uh, your primary point of view character, Siraji, is one of the trappers. And I'm just wondering uh, how you came to, to meet him, how the two of you came to uh, trust each other, uh, and what you can tell us about that part of the process as well. 
Well, the, the film itself was inspired by one of our producers is a is a very talented photographer, Michele Sibiloni, and he spent six years on the ground photographing to create the photo book in Senene, which is the Ugandan word for grasshopper. Uh, so being friends with him and, and I'm at the time I was based in, in eastern Congo and Michele was in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, so from time to time we'd hang out and, and he would explain to me this project he was investing himself into. And to me, it just the, the imagery he was showing me, it was it was so out of this world that it felt like a movie. It felt cinematic. So when he completed that book, uh, we jumped right into the film. So he had done a lot of this groundwork for us. Uh, the the process was uh, was uh, it was unique, but it's one that that I like to follow in, in the work I do, where, you know, often we're we're trying to focus on a destination, but our characters and our stories usually end up poking us from behind. So uh, so the way it worked out is Michele and I went into the field and and kind of investigated these different trapping areas, these hot zones of grasshoppers that he had discovered over the years and, and did just that. We we immersed into these trapping uh, environments and, and just tried to meet people. And and Siraj, actually, as we passed through one of his trapping sites, he was immediately shouting at, at us to get out of there. So already I was like, oh, wait, this I'm feeling something here. And and over over a couple of days or, or perhaps a week, we became friends with them and explained to him what we were doing, because because I think for these guys, it's, you know, it's very curious for them. Like, why are you here? Do you want to make a film about grasshoppers or us? You know, so we had to to be very clear and careful with explaining why we were there and and how we wanted to collaborate with them. Wow, thanks. Um, and I'm I'm wondering too um, if there were moments in this process where you perhaps either felt, oh no, I don't think we have a film here. Uh, this is not going to work. It's too dependent <laughs> on things that are happening beyond our control. Or if there were moments where you you felt completely convinced and yes, we've got it. This will actually make a documentary in full. You you're hitting the nail on the head. It was exactly these ups and downs. Uh, in the three seasons we were with this trapping team, and, and the season is about mid October to late December. I think we had a total of 110 shoot days. Only two of those days did that swarm arrive. So most of the time we we're expecting nothing to happen that this this event we were hoping for that we had been told about and, and this event that we'd seen in some of Michele's photos was just not going to happen so and sometimes we we're like okay this is this is a story about how it's not working out and 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 these uh these grasshoppers are uh are are, are changing this this whole process of harvesting them is changing but uh but with with a little luck and and the instincts of Siraj knowing when and where to set up his traps, we managed to get really lucky. Uh, so yeah, it was it was unknown in, until the end, and and then of course in the editing process, uh, our phenomenally talented editor Elise Ardell Spiegel, and she's one of our producers as well. Uh, she also was in the field with us, which brings a, a great advantage in in the post side of things. You know, trying to weave these stories. Of, of these trappers and then create the stories of these grasshoppers who, who aren't exactly the most uh, cooperative uh, subjects. Uh, that, that was a whole nother, a whole nother ball of wax. So um, uh, that's where the, the film really started coming alive. And we started seeing these, these comparatives that she was building between the insect world and the human world and, and how we're connected and, and how we're separated as well. Yeah. I, do need to compliment her uh, on the remarkably taut uh, edit of the film. Um, you know, I only get to see the end product over on my side, uh, but it is a film that even while it takes its time immersing us in the insect world and letting us get to know what the trappers do, it still moves um, really quickly and really logically. I'm wondering at what point in this process you and she perhaps start letting the the key themes evolve because Grasshopper Republic is more than just um, a story of a grasshopper team going through their seasonal process. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there. In in the time we spent with them, we 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 started noticing certain things that were very important. You know, the the grasshopper swarm is 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 a swarm of reproduction, and that comes after the rainy season or or kind of during the tail end of a rainy season when there's a vegetative boom it had a lot to do with it and we knew from the trappers experience that the moon the, the cycles of the moon also impacted the way the grasshoppers reacted so we knew that we wanted to to have these elements in there it was important and as we were doing this without narration and and removing a lot of this info we we wove it in visually uh so this yeah i mean i i, I can't take much credit i elise and i would would talk about these these themes and these tropes and and how we wanted to do, but she's such a force that that she would go off and and find find these things in the footage and, and build build these different scenes and uh, yeah it was it was a long process uh, our, our rough string out uh, with with all these hours of footage was was three times longer than the, the final version is so you know there's a, a a very rough string out and then we had to start condensing and. And figuring out where and and how we were going to build this this arc, where you know we're taking three seasons and kind of crushing it down into one to make it feel feel like a it's a cohesive moment. And the the work that those folks are doing is really uh, quite dangerous too. Um, it's physically dangerous at different moments. It's clearly uh, has impact on their their skin. Uh, rashes are <laughs> gruesome to behold and uh, really just kind of astonishing, gobsmacking that they would endure that. Um, so that comes through in the in the film as well. Um, do you worry about your own and your crew's personal safety um, when you're out there? Sure. Uh, I mean, worry, I think, uh, I mean, worry maybe isn't the word. We we threw ourselves right in there with them. So we, and I think that's a big part of building trust as well between between us and our subjects. You know, we we have to be right there in, in the trap site at night with them every night, just trying to live like they're living. And, and for sure, all those insect bites, we all suffered. And and uh, the lights also are very uh, damaging to the retinas of our eyes. So, uh, so you know, we, we try our best to have protective eyewear, but trying to wear welder's goggles at night just doesn't work. So you just you have to be with them and, and do your best to protect ourselves. What which uh, sometimes didn't didn't always work out, but but uh, in the end it was completely worth it. And you know, I imagine I imagine trying to operate a camera at night in the Congo um, is difficult enough uh, without having to wear welder's glasses as protective eyewear. Uh, yeah. and, and also also getting used to uh, if something's crawling on you, not just hitting it. Because a lot of these insects that came with the grasshoppers have a, are either venomous or they have caustic uh, kind of chemical agents. So doing that would actually create create one of these burns. So you just got to get really calm and 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 kind of let it happen. And you know, it's a combination of where your instincts are like, oh, I'm going to try and cover myself up, but then they get inside and you can't get them out. <laughs> So uh, everything we learned from the trappers themselves, you know, is uh, they they guided us and, and and took us into their into their team and and taught us how they do it and and how we should do it. So complete collaboration. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just that, that is next, a... just before the next question, you mentioned Congo, and that last one is actually in Uganda. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, right. uh, and Congo is where you are speaking to us uh, from today, correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Goma in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo, beginning a new project with the same team as well. You are, same okay, team. well, that's that's, <laughs> that's more to look forward to. Uh, just back for one last moment and a couple last questions on uh, Grasshopper Republic. Um, where and when can viewers look forward to seeing it? Well, right now we're we're kind of in the beginning of our festival run. Uh, 
this is a it's a very unique film as as you've seen so uh we've we've got a sales agent that's pushing it around but uh i think these these types of projects take time so to make its way around uh later on uh or in mid november we'll be at doc nyc uh so so that's exciting we'll have our new york city premiere there and and hopefully on to many more festivals and and ideally we it finds a, a great home on, on a streamer or on a on a, a television channel where people can access it i i hope so too it really deserves to be seen by as many people as is possible daniel um what is the next film that you're working on i got a, a couple ideas in the works uh here in the Congo, there's there's a lot going on and it's very complex. There's, you know, decades and decades of conflict and, and you have uh, uh, incredible natural resources and animals. So right now I'm I'm in the uh, the the scouting process of something. So I've, I've got different ideas. But but again, just like on Grasshopper Republic, I'm I'm trying not to, to have a, a narrow vision of, of what this can be. And I'm just going to be here for some months meeting people and talking to people and trying to let the story find me. So, uh, so uh, I'm not quite sure what it'll be, but, uh, but this is the process that, that we, we use to, to do it. And sometimes it doesn't work out and, uh, and hopefully this one will. I hope so too. And I know from speaking with many uh, interviewing with many documentary filmmakers over the years that it really can be an exercise simply sometimes in patience in letting the story uh, unfold and come to you. And I really liked your metaphor of your, your subject tapping you on the soul on the shoulder from behind. Uh, that was one I would have liked to have used in my teaching in my former career had I heard it then. Um, how did you get started in in this line of work? Uh, I know that you've done um, you've done other documentary projects. Um, I know that you've done some photojournalism as well. Is, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I began as a photojournalist uh, originally for a smaller newspaper in upstate New York, and then I went on to uh, take on more independent freelance foreign assignment stuff eventually basing in Nairobi, Kenya in the early 2000s. Uh, and uh, in the process of working for these newswires, I found myself covering a conflict in Eastern Congo in 2008. And around the same time, I, was, I wasn't really feeling the passion for journalism and uh, the technology of, uh, of recording video, especially on these, these digital SLRs was available. So I made the switch into filmmaking in the... Uh, in 2010 with uh, the documentary this is congo which was my my first feature and uh, it took some time it took about five years filming and and another few years years to edit uh which which was a dose uh and and i was i was hooked uh, and still am uh I, I love i love the experience of uh of this this work uh uh of the the responsibility of storytelling uh the the collaboration with with people from from other other countries other cultures uh, for me it's super rewarding and and uh, yeah I, I don't I don't know what what else I would do if it wasn't this well thank you for doing this in particular Dan um, I've seen uh, Grasshopper Republic and it is a remarkable piece of filmmaking uh, truly immersive and uh, thought provoking at the same time just want to say thank you for speaking with us at film obsessive today uh and wish you all the best with your next endeavor and hoping that uh grasshopper republic has a long and strong festival run and finds its way uh into uh many people's homes and theaters thanks so much paul and, and thanks for having me and on behalf of my whole team and and all the characters involved uh yeah thank you to everybody who will hopefully be able to watch it <laughs>